Gallagher of the San Francisco Giants making his way out of the field here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis for the biggest game of his life in what has been a magnificent comeback from a series of operations. The last time Hamaker was in the national spotlight, the 83 All-Star game, but he was touched for that Fredlin Grand Slam and was shelled. His All-Star manager, Whitey Herzog. And today, Hamaker, coming off a solid effort in Game 3 last Friday, hopes to beat Whitey and his Cardinals, but he must do it on the road, where he won only one of nine decisions this season. Atley will be opposed by Danny Cox, who made his first appearance tonight on the field just before 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, this past season, Cox able to make it back from a broken toe, the result of this drive off the bat of the Giants, Mike Altretti. Cox, an 18-game winner in 1985, went 11 and 9 this season, and he's been a big game pitcher October 1st. He beat the Expos in the division clincher, and he had great success in the 85 World Series and League Championship Series. So it will be Danny Cox and Atley Hamaker in tonight's seventh game showdown at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. We welcome you to the start of our prime time coverage. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert. Giants and Cardinals getting together in game number 169 this season. The winner to go to the World Series. Lineup changes. Chris Spire starts at second base instead of Robbie Thompson. Mike Aldretti leads off plays right field while the Cardinals remain the same as last night. Recapping this series. In game number one, it was the off-speed pitching of Greg Matthews subbing for the injured Cox that kept the Giants off balance. Matthews struck out seven in seven and a third. Game two, Dave Grabecki allowed only two hits and a brilliant performance going all the way, allowing only one runner to get as far as second base. Grabecki blanked the Cardinals five to nothing. At Candlestick Friday night, the Cardinals' only home run of the series, rookie Jim Lindemann, putting it out to spark the cards to a come from behind 6-5 victory. Saturday in San Francisco, Jeffrey Leonard hit his fourth home run in his fourth straight game, a league championship series record as the Giants evened it up at two apiece. In game five, Joe Price came out of the Giants' bullpen to pitch five scoreless innings, giving up only one hit. He struck out six, Giants taking a three games to two lead. Last night here in St. Louis, it was a sacrifice fly, producing the only run. Tony Pena able to score after reaching when Candy Maldonado lost his fly ball in the lights. So it has come down to this tonight with the winner to face the Minnesota Twins in the World Series. And the Twins resting up after clinching Monday afternoon in Detroit. Any pitch could be the last. Reardon has it. The Minnesota Twins are in the World series. From the Metrodome in Minneapolis, we are joined by Tom Kelly, the manager of the American League champion, Minnesota Twins. Tom, the past 48 hours, what has it been like for you since the clinching? Well, we got back, Kamar, from uh, Detroit uh, about 11 o'clock at night, and there was 50,000 people here in the Metrodome, and it was quite an emotional and exciting thing, and, and something that I'll always remember, I know the ball players are always going to remember, and, and we're winding down from that, and today we're we're having a little bit of a workout just to get back in the groove of things and meet some of the press people. And, and uh, that's what we've been doing since uh, the flight home from Detroit. And uh, we're looking forward to getting started again. All right. Some people feel the Tigers left it emotionally in their final weekend series against Toronto. Do you fear the Twins' emotions could be left behind, left in the American League Championship Series against Detroit? I think uh, that having the four days off is going to help us, uh, give us a chance to get a lot of the hoopla out of the way. and and uh, we can get prepared to play in the World Series. So I, I think it's going to be beneficial to have the four days off to help get us uh, our head screwed on right again, so, per se, and, and uh, we'll be ready to play Saturday night. And as you look to the World Series, they call Herzog the White Rat. They call Craig Humbaby. What do they call Tom Kelly? Well, the best I can do is uh, my clubhouse man come in and wrote on my notepad, uh, TK2, you know, and uh, I said, TK2, what's that? And he said, well, Tommy Kramer's TK1, so I have to settle for TK2, and maybe I can move up a little bit. But right now in the Twin Cities, Tom Kelly is number one. Back with Candy Maldonado and his side of the story in just a moment. This National League Championship Series pregame show is brought to you by Mazda, bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda way pressure-packed final games of 
series. What about the pressure? The players tighten. Are there some who do choke? Yes, they do. Actually, the pressure is so great, Marv. A lot of guys try to do more than they're capable of. What they end up doing is trying to do it all with one swing and a bat, and they forget about the team concept of playing the game. Is it a matter of some players trying to avoid embarrassment? Right. I think that's the case. Instead of playing to be the hero, they're tra playing not to be the GOAT. Instead of playing to win, they're playing not to lose. Did you ever choke? <laughs> yes, I did against Don Drysdale my rookie year, but fortunately I had a lot of other opportunities and I was able to come through. All right. How do you see the manager? handling things tonight. But I think the toughest thing for the managers to do tonight will be to not to play the percentages. Percentages are great over a 162 game schedule. They hold up. But in a one game playoff, you have to throw them out the window, manage aggressively from the first pitch until the last. You have to go after it. All right, it will be Atley Hammaker going against Danny Cox. Seventh and final game is straight ahead. We're set now for the playing of our national anthem. Let's go to Cardinal Public Address announcer John Hewlett. Performing the national anthem tonight are four members of the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra's brass section. They are Susan Slaughter, Principal Trumpet, Thomas Drake, Assistant Principal Trumpet, Timothy Myers, Assistant Principal Trombone, and Melvin Jernigan on trombone. Highly Only on TV2 Eyewitness News. Marty Hartman, part of your hometown team. NBC Sports presents the 1987 National League Championship Series. Tonight from Bush Memorial Stadium, the San Francisco Giants versus the St. Louis Cardinals. Brought to you by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. By Mazda, bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda way. By McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste. And by United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly sky. Everybody, I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola. Welcome to Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And after 168 scuffling games, it has come down to this. And I'll tell you, very few people would believe we would have a Game 7, but last night's was probably the one of the best games I've seen. Whitey Herzog is batting 500 in the hope department. He was hoping to get to game six and use Jack Clark, but he does get to game seven and get the man he was hoping to be there, the fellow who missed opening day, and that would be Danny Cox. He took the hard way because he started out by saying, Cox will open up so I can have him one, four, and seven. Of course, he had the stiff neck, but here he is in game seven. Then there's so many things you could talk about, but I think that last night we saw why this ball 
club is built for this ballpark with the defense. Indeed. We saw a great play by Willie McGee, Terry Pendleton on the bunt, Vince Coleman cutting down Melvin's base hit. Meanwhile, when you look at the pitching staffs, Atley Hammaker 1-8 and eight on the road this year. He'll be backed up by a well-rested Mike Kruko. Even Rick Rushill can be seen. And perhaps the fellow we've really been looking for with the game on the line, Scott Gorell. I think we might see all of them. I say that because I think at the first sign of trouble on either side, you go for everything. I mean, they may even take Gussie off the Clydesdales <laughs> if they get in trouble. And should there be any trouble with Danny Cox, remember, you have a very well-rested Joe McGrain before you get to the bullpen. Well, we'll get to the starting lineups. We'll have all the pregame stats and stories for the showdown at Bush. All coming up right after this. Game seven, Ozzie Smith leading the Cardinals out for their defensive stations. And here come the Giants. The way San Francisco will stack up against Danny Cox. This is the 123rd different Giant lineup. And the first time Roger Craig has fielded this lineup. Aldretti, Mitchell, and Leonard, Clark, Davis, and Brenly, Spire, Uribe, and Hammaker. There's the defense, the same as it was. Uh, Pena behind the plate, Cox the pitcher. Danny Cox, the loser in his other appearance, working on three days rest, and Mike Aldretti, ball one. It was Aldretti on the 9th of July who hit a line drive that fractured the right foot of Danny Cox. Pitching on two days rest, he's done that twice this year, and he won both times. In fact, the clincher against Montreal was on three days rest. Checking his past performances coming back on three days rest. Over the last three years, Danny Cox has made ten starts on three days rest. His record, six wins, three losses, and an earned run average of three. He'll be pitching now to Kevin Mitchell. Mitchell hitting 269 in the series, one away. Big chopper foul outside of third and down the line. And the count on one. Atley Hammaker down there in the bullpen, still loosening up. So Hammaker keeps toiling while Cox is out center stage. No balls and one strike to Mitchell. One and one. The plate umpire, John Kibler, Ed Montague, Dave Pallone, Eric Gregg on the line. Jim Quick on the left field foul line. Bob Engel on the right field line. Jeffrey Leonard. Another capacity crowd, so you would assume the paid attendance would be the same as the others here, 55,331. One and two to Kevin Mitchell. Two and two. He doesn't have any trick pitches. He's got a good fastball. He sinks the ball. Uh, he does come inside, as you just saw, and he has great ability to change speeds. This is the guy Whitey Herzog wanted out there for game seven. Two balls and two strikes. And that's Luke right at us. So Mitchell is jammed, two down. And now everybody's attention on Jeffrey Leonard. and I went out to left field and boy did those bleacher fans let him have it. <laughs> One ball and no strikes to the real Hackman. Fastball away. Ball two. Two and all. You can 
understand Whitey Herzog going with Danny Cox. He had the clincher this year against Montreal. He clinched against the Mets in 85. He won game three of the LCS against Los Angeles when the Cardinals were down. No games to two. There's the breaking ball, and that's up. Well, they described uh, Danny Cox as the big game pitcher, and that pretty well says it all. Three balls and no strikes to Jeffrey Leonard, and certainly no cinch he's taking 3-0, and not with his long ball potential. Waiting his turn on deck, the left-hand hitting Will Clark. 3-0. and Down the pipe. Interesting sideline to tonight's telecast. The San Francisco Giant employees are watching the game in Candlestick Park. That's a change banged into left field for a base hit. A 74 mile an hour straight change in Leonard singles, and the batter will be Will Clark. A 3 1 pitch, he was going to give him something beside the fastball, and Leonard was ready for it, waited on it which is what batting coach Morales was talking to all his hitters about. Wait on that ball. Will Clark hitting 381 in the series with a home run and three RBIs. Followed by the switch hitting Chili Davis. Leonard held on by Lindemann and there's a chopper right to Lindemann. He's on the bag. No run. One hit and a man left. And at the end of half an inning, the Giants nothing. Cardinals coming up. You don't have to listen to Tommy Herr, Jim Lindemann and clean up at first. Barry Pendleton, Tony Pena, Willie McGee, Jose Okindo, Danny Cox, the pitcher, and on the mound trying to stop them at Lee Hamaker. The defense, Leonard is in left field, Chili Davis in center field, Eldredi in right field, the infield, the same except for second base where Chris Fire has replaced Thompson, and it's friendly behind the plate and Hamaker on the mound. Hadley Hamaker, a 10-game winner, but most of them, almost all of them, at Candlestick. His record on the road, one win and eight losses. He was one and one against the Cardinals. He is one and three lifetime. And he'll be pitching to Vince Coleman, Ozzie Smith, and Tommy Herr. Vince Coleman, the biggest surprise, the fact he is still looking for a stolen base after six games. So the premier base dealer in the National League has been shut down up to tonight. Ball one. Kevin Mitchell defending against the bunt is in on the rug inside the bag at third. The outfield about straight away. Two balls and no strikes. Coleman last night against Drabecki went 0 for 3, which means he is 0 for 11, hitting right-handed. All of his hits in the series have come as a left-handed batter. Hamaker has to keep good balance and rhythm. That's the key to his pitch, and he changes speeds well. In there, 2 and 1. He does have a split finger. The thing they talk about him, Ben, is he's always asking, how hard am I throwing? He seems to be preoccupied with that. And Norm Sherry always says, well, throw five miles less than you think you're throwing. Two and one to the leadoff man, Vince Coleman. On the corner, strike two. Two and two. Rich Hacker coaching at first, Nick Leva at third. This pitch right on the corner was a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. He's been 90, 89, 88, 90, so it's a pretty good indication that he does have a good fastball. Two and two. Foul off. Roger Craig, this far away from Minnesota, sharing that distance with Whitey Herzog. One of them goes to the World Series. The other one comes up empty. Two balls and two strikes. Hit down the right field line. Foul slicing way back out of play. So the count stays. Two balls, two strikes. To refresh your memory, 330 down the line. 383 up the power alleys and 414 to straightaway center. 
Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Two and two. And that's it to center. Coming up for it is Chili Davis. And it has to make it on a bounce. Vince Coleman's first hit right-handed in the series. And he definitely will want to send a message that he's going to be taken off. So we got quite a battle going here early. Chili Davis comes in, looked like he might have a play. Now he has to play that artificial service bounce and keep it from getting behind him. Remember, Adley Hamaker has had a lot of trouble with opponent base running. He has seven balks this year, and the opponents have stolen 25 out of 34. So let's see if Coleman tries to put him to the acid test. And Ozzie takes ball one. Ozzie checking with Nick Labor to see about what to do with Coleman. Coleman has been in a position to steal a base five times in the series, but he's only attempted once, and he was thrown out on a pitch out. Twice, Ozzie Smith put the first pitch into play. This time, the count now is one ball and no strikes. And it depends on Hamaker's uh, attitude as far as the pitch out because it's a perfect pitch for Coleman to take off. Ozzie, a one-eyed hitter when Coleman's on base. Vince with both feet on the rug. Boy, that really will ring the bell for the pitcher. Two balls and no strikes. You can really see what Coleman does to a defense. Friendly dropped the ball, both Uribe and Spire going over to cover second base. Uh, uh, he's the jumper cable on his ball club, no question about that. Vince Coleman trying to lead the Cardinals to get the jump. And two balls and no strikes to count. Both feet on the rug again. And Hamaker has to drive him back. Normally, like Pavlov's dog, when a runner touches the rug, the bell seems to go up in a pitcher's head and he goes over there. And Coleman with both feet on the rug. 2-0. There he goes. And there's a ground ball to Spire. He has to go to first. So they play hit and run, but with Coleman going, it takes the Giants out of the possible double play. Like he had such a big jump, I doubt very much if Friendly would have been able to get him at second base. But when you put the play on, it's Ozzy's job to get the bat on the ball, and he did that. Look at him. He's watching that ball all the way, so that's the tip off. It was a hit and run play, not a straight steal. I'm a little surprised because Whitey has wanted the Cardinals to run. He has posed the question, I don't know why they're not running. And yet, when he had the opportunity to run him, he put the hit and run on. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I thought it would be more a straight steal. But uh, what he's trying to do, obviously, is to get on that scoreboard first and then just uh, rely on every everybody on that pitching staff. Tommy Herr with Coleman at second base, and he's always a threat to steal third. Coleman, by the way, has stolen third, 22 out of 27 this year. So Hatton will really have to watch him. He makes no bones about it. He'd rather run off second than he would off first. And Spire has to really jockey him because uh, Uribe's back and short. With Spire almost holding him on, Tommy Herr would love to get a ball he can handle and go the other way. All in one, the count to Tommy Herr. Struggling in the series, hitting just 182. Whitey Herzog mulled over the possibility of switching Herzog and Pendleton and decided no. Last ball away, one ball, one strike. Tommy Herr with one RBI. Nothing is, upsets a ball club more than speed. I mean, you can have that big power hitter, sure it's one strike, but this is an, an agonizing, a prolonged kind of thing when you get a fellow like Coleman on. He's got everybody jumping. No score, first inning, one out. Coleman at second. One ball and one strike. And Hamaker off the bag. Spire trying to hold Coleman on. And as soon as Hamaker had the look, he knew there was no play. He 
if you're the hitter and you see the second baseman on the bag, I guess you have to believe he's going to work the ball inside to you. He's got to. You've got to be looking for that ball because if he just taps it out that way. One and one to Tommy Hurd. Again, a fake. They've got him picked off. He was stealing. Spire now releasing to Mitchell. Mitchell to Uribe. So Vince Coleman is picked off. One, four, five, six. And you have two down in the first inning. That is rule caught stealing, so he's 0 for 2. You can see he was going. He was going to steal, and the throw fires so close. The Giants almost messed the play up because right now he should just charge him and, and make the tag, and it looks like Coleman might get out of it. Uribe makes the tag. Boy, that's a big, big, big lift for the Giants because it looked like the Cardinals had that thing called momentum going for him. Coleman is hung out to dry, and you have two down here in the first inning. No score. And the count one and one to Tommy Hurd. Full foul behind Nick Laban and the count one and two. Every time I see a rundown, as we look at Vince Coleman, he knows exactly what he did. And he's disappointed, obviously. The best of ever I've ever seen. You know who I'm thinking of. Jackie Robinson would get in those rundowns. He'd have everybody, including two vendors, trying to tag him. One and two, the count of Tommy Hurd. Two down, bases empty in the first inning, no score. Two and two. On deck, Jim Lindemann, the first baseman. So Coleman had the chance to be a catalyst and make something happen. He didn't make it on a steal. They played hit and run, and then when he's thinking steal, they pick him off. Two balls, two strikes. Busted back, ground ball to short. Uribe with time takes care of it, and that's that. A base hit and nobody left, and at the end of an inning, a frustrated Vince Coleman going back to work. No score. In the first inning by Cox, Leonard was successful, and Clark hit the first pitch, a curveball, and bounced out. And players will do that a lot of times. Did you think his curveball broke quick? Uh, you think it's a regular curveball? They'll ask all kinds of questions. Chili Davis will start it off. He'll be followed by Bob Brenly and then Chris Fire. Second inning, no score. Fastball, a comeback. One down. They'll not be able to pull that ball, uh, man. It's, it's a good sink on an outside part to play. He's going to have to go with it. If they do that, it'll be ground balls either right back to Cox like this one or to the second baseman. You can see it tail away. He cuts it and sinks it, and there's no way you're going to pull that ball. We'll see what kind of a pattern might be developing against Danny Cox. Remember Jeff Lennon went three balls and no strikes, then three and one, and got a change up for a base hit. The next two hitters have each hit the first pitch. So let's see what Bob Brenly does. Second inning, no score, one away. Dollar he takes. <laughs> Ball one. I don't know if he was taken or was just out of the strike zone. He should have been taken. Let's put it this way. hitting 214 and his big problem had been making contact he had struck out a half a dozen times in there one and one Brenly hit a home run against Danny Cox in game four one and one and another one one and two good fastball and spotting it well keep that ball down that's ground ball pitch such a spot that you're not too sure it's in the strike zone, but it's too close to take. Breaks out. And Brenly, even if he hits it, can't really drive it. Good pitch by Cox. Coming up now with two down and the base is empty in the second inning, 37-year-old Chris Spire. He played for the Giants against Pittsburgh in the 71 series and hit 357. Then he played for Montreal against Philadelphia in 81 and hit 400. Plus the fact that Robbie Thompson was slumping. Thompson hitting only 105. And Roger Craig goes with the veteran. Spire has 
a lot on his mind besides the game. His father suffered a heart attack Saturday and is in a hospital in Alameda, California. Two balls and no strikes to Chris Fire. In there. Fire had played 16 years in the big leagues and had hit one grand slam. He hit two this year, five days apart, one of them against the Cardinals. A three time All Star back in the early 70s. Fastball hit to Ozzie. So the Giants go quietly, and at the end of an inning and a half, no score. Bottom of the second inning, no score in the ball game, but Vince Coleman's mind is still on the first inning. He is talking about Hamaker's move and trying to get some counsel from the first base coach, Rich Hacker. He was going to steal, and he got caught. Jim Lindemann, followed by Terry Fendelin and then Tony Pena. Second inning, no score. <laughs> Lindemann doing a fine job at first base, filling in for the injured Jack Clark. 400 average, the only Cardinal home run, and three RBIs. He homered at Candlestick. We didn't know it at the time. Last night, a run scored for St. Louis in the second inning. The only run of the game. Way out in front of it. 0-2. Oh and, and friendly, making sure that Hammaker stays down. Hammaker, as we said, he changes speeds very well. Jack Clark can only sit and watch the understudy in the Stars' role tonight. Out of third, down the line, still no balls and two strikes. I don't think he wanted to get that ball there, Vin, as he walked off the mound. Hammaker was really talking to himself. Uh, he's got him uh, two strikes, no balls. That's the spot where you you want to really either go get him with the, your pitch or set him up for the next one. And that was the best pitch that Lindemann had of the three that uh, Hammaker threw. No balls and two strikes to Jim Lindemann. Here in St. Louis, when they first saw Lindemann, a lot of people felt that his physical makeup is quite similar to one of the great Cardinals of the past, third baseman Kenny Boyer. That's a great way to break in if they start saying you'll even look like Boyer. Mm. Jim from Evanston, Illinois, he went to Bradley University. One and two. Fouled away, and he got bitten by it. I think the two worst things that can happen to a young ball player is to say you look like somebody and you have to fill the shoes because you never tell you with what. And the other thing is you have potential because potential means you're not going very good. And then, of course, if you don't, quote, live up to the potential, they don't say the scout's wrong. They say you just are wrong. If, if you ever live up to your potential, look out. One and two, the count of Jim Lindemann. Opening up matters here in the bottom of the second inning. No score. Lindemann, Pendleton, Pena. If anybody gets aboard, Willie McGee. One and two. Lifted foul down the right field line out of play. It must be an eerie sound. As we told you, the giant employees are in the press box at Candlestick Park. This game is being shown on the big screen, and the sound will be heard in Candlestick. So every sound here at Bush Stadium will be rattling around an empty <laughs> ballpark a couple of thousand miles away. What a picture. <laughs> She's right out of Star Wars. One and two the count of Jim Lindemann. Chased it. Strikeout number one for Adley Hamaker. One away. Take another look. That's the kind of pitch you make when you have two strikes and the fellas widening the strike zone with every pitch. It's out of the zone. It's a breaking ball. Good spot. Brentley really motioned for it. 
just a little thing, but watch how many times Brenly will check the feet of the hitter and look up at the eyes. He wants to see if they're batting about the same spot that he saw him the last time, and are they trying to sneak a peek? That's what you're protecting against. Terry Pendleton at the plate. And that one goes to the screen. Ball one. Terry with one RBI in the series. He is 0 for 8. He is another switch hitter who has come up empty as a right-handed batter. That's one reason why the Cardinals have had so much trouble against the giant left-handers. One and one. That pretty well sums up the Cardinals, but it doesn't specifically talk about the switch hitters, and the switch hitters are the one who have really had trouble. Going into last night's game, the switch hitters were hitting 140. But Coleman got well with a base hit in the first inning, and now here's Pendleton trying to do the same. One and two. No score. One out, second inning. Fouled away off to the right, out of play. Boy, that was right out of the playground, what Friendly did. You saw his right hand, he motioned up, and then he put that glove right there until the last minute. I mean, that's what you used to do. Get that ball up there and make sure control back there. There he goes, checking the feet. Check the eyes. One and two. Little chin music and the count two balls, two strikes. You don't want to give that sign too soon because that's the easiest one for the hitter to see uh, as far as location is concerned. Here's where he's going to try to get his pitch of decision. I don't think it'll be up. See what friendly was? He got away with one. Natalie Hammaker, who of course got headlines because he served up the grand slam in the All Star game. And that's just another sideline thought about this. The winning manager of this game will be the All Star manager next July. Two and two. And that banged into center, base hit. So two right-hand hitters who had failed to get a hit, Vince Coleman and Terry Pendleton, each get a base hit tonight. And the batter is Tony Pena. Pendleton has had a bad leg from that injury he received in the workout day, but he's got to start running, too. The Cardinals have to get their game that got him here in gear. And you saw Pena checking hard with the third base coach. Uh, it's a matter of time. When will Pendleton run? And Brentley will check with Craig for pitch outs. Pendleton stole 19 bases during the regular year. So Hammerker will have to keep an eye on him. Meanwhile, Tony Pena is a pretty good hit and run man. He certainly was when he played at Pittsburgh. And we'll see if Whitey uses this combination now. One out, second inning, no score. McGee on deck. You know, if he uses it with Ozzy Smith, he's going to put something on here. He's got to take the game. He's got to take charge of the game, and he can only do that with speed. Second inning, no score. One away. One ball, no strike. And Pena has a look now at Nick Leva, as does Pendleton. Still comes up fairly high with that leg kick. He doesn't drag it like a rush, who, of course, is right handed. So it'll be a case of throwing over there and using different rhythms to try to stop Pendleton. One ball and no strikes. He wanted to go, Vin. Guarantee you. The Cardinals will have to run and force it because remember the Giants led the major leagues in double plays. I'd look for that pitch out. In there for a strike and the count one ball one strike. Pena looks, so does Pendleton, so we'll see if Whitey puts it on. Meanwhile, Roger Craig trying to think one step ahead. 
All part of the fun of the entire league championship series. One manager trying to outthink the other. One and one. And there's a ground ball into right field. Base hit. Penland is being waved to third. The throw is not in time. keep going on the bad leg so I assume just about as he got to the bag at second he felt the twin back when I looked at labor to see he was waving him I then saw a panel and hesitate remember he had the triple and candlestick and it took him several minutes to get over that and obviously he needs all the time he can get right now Immediately in the giant bullpen, left-handed Joe Price begins to loosen up. The hammocker in a jam, and of course, there's no way to wait tonight. Let's take another look at Terry Penelin. He sees the come-ahead sign. Before he got to second base, you'll see a little cloud of dirt, and I think that might be when he did it. Not yet. Right there. That's when that left ankle slipped, and you know he's got the bad left ankle. Watch him grab his side, though, as he gets into third base, Ben. It looks like he yeah, and that's where Gieselman was rubbing, right there. Uh-huh, stitch. He grabbed a stitch in there, and it looked like that was the problem. And Pena, at first base, a good piece of hitting. So now Hammaker in the first jam of the night. Runners at first and third, one out. Willie McGee the batter. No score in the second, one away. Giants halfway on the right side, double play on the left. you got a chance to get him at the plate. That's the effectiveness of throwing the ball and trying to pick people off. 
it isn't just to, to get the out. If you do, that's great, but you got to try to keep it close. That's the key. Kelly Downs has joined Joe Price in the giant bullpen. 0 oh and 2. Almost nicked him. One ball, two strikes. Kelly Downs, the inside man. Interesting, when you look at Roger Craig in his bullpen, you know, Whitey Herzog came into the series with eight pitchers. Craig really set a record. He came in with ten pitchers. I can't imagine a manager coming in with ten. But Roger did, and his tenth man was Joe Price, who wound up pitching that magnificent relief job at Candlestick Park. One and two. And it gets away. He just boxed it up from that angle. I didn't see it hit the dirt. It'll be a pass ball. It hit him right in the glove. The ball seemed to go out and come back in and handcuff him. He cut that ball and he just boxed it up. That's what he did. The infield is up. Two balls and two strikes. Payne your third. McGee at second. Ball three. situation changes now as far as pitching you got to go for that strikeout whereas men in first and second sure strikeout be great but you'd like to get that ground ball now you really got to give it that extra Roger telling Adley Hamaker he wanted him to pitch from a stretch to improve his control three and two the count Why? 
winds up striking out the side. Only the world will not remember it. At the end of two, Cardinals four, Giants nothing. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. National League Championship Series is brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. And by your Toyota dealer. Quality right down the line. Who could ask for anything more? Well, he said he wanted to give little Annie, three years old today, a big, big present. So there it is. Happy birthday. And the present is shared with teammate Tony Pena. As Pena sees the ball go in the seats, there's a ribbon on that package for everybody in the Mound City. Four to nothing St. Louis. And now the question is, can the Giants come back? They will have Jose Uribe, Eddie Milner, and Mike Aldretti. A footnote on Terry Pendleton. He suffered a slight muscle pull in the thigh, had it wrapped, and he's back at his position at third base. And that's slapped into left field, and Uribe, a line single to left to try and get something going. Eddie Milner hitting for Adley Hamaker, and there is Pendleton with the bad leg, but trying to stay in there. for six in the series. Uribe held on by Lindemann. Four to nothing St. Louis in the third. Joe Price continues to throw in the giant bullpen. And Hamaker is gone. That's a strike. As the Cardinals have come alive with the bat tonight, it points up the fact that the Giants have been dead in the water. But there's a line drive single to right to put runners at first and second, and nobody out. The Giants have not scored in their last 15 innings. No back-to-back -back singles, and Mike Aldretti coming up. And the thing Pena's out there talking about is you can't get out of your game plan because you got a four-run lead. You can't just go out there and say, hey, throw strikes and don't walk anybody because we're only in the third inning. You've got to stay in your game plan and pitch like the bases are loaded. Mike Aldretti, who hit over 320 during the regular year and is just one for seven in the championship series. One of those hits was that line drive that broke a bone in Cox's right foot. St. Louis. No runs. Three hits for the Giants. Top of the third. Nobody out. Ground ball to Lindemann. He goes to Ozzie Smith. Back to Cox. Double play. turn throw which of course is the key and it's a big double play Lindemann gives him a good ball to handle watch Ozzy he had a good target very close in fact Cox made it close by going into a crouch a good first baseman would have stretched out utilizing his size and not made that so close at all if he reaches out with the glove uh, he does make it much easier. He made it close by not only going down, but keeping the glove close to his chest. you got to reach out if you're going to get down like that. So Uribe is at third with two out in the third inning. Cardinals four, Giants nothing. Giants cut by their own sword. Their favorite defensive weapon, the double play. One and one to Kevin Mitchell, who lined out to Ozzie Smith in the first inning. He made that throw from second base like he was a pitcher. He knew exactly where he wanted to throw it. One and one. One and two. 
You talk about momentum in a game. The Cardinals jump out with four. The Giants try to come right back with a couple of base hits. Now, if Aldretti's double play is followed by an out, the momentum really comes back to St. Louis. You've got to stop those guys. You can't let them score when you've had the scoring inning. And the Cardinals with four. This is when Cox has to shut them down. So this is a big time at bat for Kevin Mitchell. One and two. Breaking ball just missed. And did you see Cox? Did he ever want that? He looked like a bowler trying to get extra body English on a strike. Just missed. It's an overhand curveball. It completely fools Mitchell. And he thought it dropped in. Kevin started to swing at that ball. Held up. Cox really wanted that one. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. On deck, the ever-present Jeffrey Leonard. Breaks, stymie by the double play. Three and two, the count to Kevin Mitchell. Cardinals four to nothing. And Ozzie greets him with a drive into left. Base hit. Leonard trying to cut it off, and Ozzie will hold on. Oh, tremendous play by Jeff Leonard. He holds him to a single, much like Vince Coleman, and with a great throw, I mean, all the way on the fly, Leonard keeps that double play in order. That ball marked two base hit all the way, but Jeffrey Leonard really makes a fine play getting over there. And his throw, he braces himself and watch this throw. It's a perfect strike. Interesting, you know the old expression about being behind the eight ball when you're in trouble. The Giants are behind because of the eighth spot. The eighth spot in the Cardinal lineup in the series is hitting 412, including a home run and four RBIs. And that means the eighth spot occupied by Tony Pena, Tom Lawless, Kurt Ford, and Jose Aquindo. Tommy Hurd broke his bat and grounded out in the first inning. Now with the Cardinals leading four to nothing, they can spend house money with Ozzie Smith at first. He was going to the bag on that pitch. One and one. Boy, he faked him right out of his shoes, Ooh. didn't he? What a move Joe Price put on. Price was so valuable to Roger Craig in the second half that when the time came to pick the squad, Craig said, I can't leave him off. And then the 10th man really paid off at Candlestick. But it's 4-0 St. Louis in the showdown game tonight. Kelly Downs is throwing behind Joe Price. One and one, the count to Tommy Hur. Jim Lindeman on deck. Time, no pick. Time had been called by the plate umpire. Watch Ozzie Smith, and here's the move he puts on him. Look at Ozzie going back. He took two steps back. One and one, the count to Tommy Hur. St. Louis, bottom of the third. Nobody out. Late on a fastball. One and two. You really have 
to keep your concentration going when you see a pitcher throw over the first base like that and holding the ball. It, it, it really is tough, and it, it requires a tremendous amount of discipline. That's why it's remarkable to hit number two back of a speed merchant and have a big year with the bat. Ozzie Smith remarkably hit 303, hitting behind Vince Coleman. Tremendous accomplishment. Hit in the air, foul down the right field line and out of play. Price on that particular delivery uh, came very close to quick pitching. I mean, he just came set and boom, here he comes to the plate. And now uh, Hacker and Smith have a little conversation down there because Price has been burying. You see, Vince Coleman has moved down into the camera bay to get a closer look at the move of Joe Price, filing it away to be used perhaps later on. He's put on about three different moves so far. One and two. Of course, considering that Tommy Herr hits in the number three slot, it is very doubtful that Coleman would be on base against Joe Price. One ball and two strikes. So down goes Tommy Herr. That was a strange inning in the second inning. Adley Hamaker gives up four runs and four hits while striking out the side. And now Price comes in to pick up a strikeout. And the batter is Jim Lindemann. Lindemann struck out. He was the first man to go down on strikes in that second. Later, Danny Cox and then Vince Coleman. But it was Okendo who put the slug on him. really edging off. Jim Lindemann at the plate due to be followed by Terry Pendleton and obviously Pendleton cannot continue. Tom Lawless comes out on deck for Terry Pendleton. Pendleton hurting himself going from first to third on Tony Pena's single and has to come out. On one. decision by Whitey Herzog to go with eight pitchers pays off because if he goes with more pitchers he doesn't have lawless. Absolutely. And of course he can readjust if he's fortunate enough to get into the World Series. That'll be interesting if they get in to see what they do with Jack Clark. I mean it would surprise me if they do not put him on the DL. Left thigh muscle pulled by Terry Pendleton, heavily wrapped, but he was unable to continue. Oh, and two the count. Well, one. And looking back, when you go to Hammaker's last game, the Cardinals were without Terry Pendleton and Jack Clark and scored six runs, their highest number of runs in any one game. Tonight, they chase Hamaker in two innings, and Atlee sits there with four runs racked up against him. Fouled away. Ozzie Smith standing at first with one out in the third. Four to nothing Cardinals. He really hasn't had a read on Price yet. If he goes, it'll be uh, just a kind of a gamble kind of thing. But on every pitch, he's been either leaning or breaking back to first base. It's been a tough read for Ozzy. And a good base runner. He stole 43 during the regular year. They pitch out to see about it. And he's holding in the count two and two. right there. Ozzie's going to tag and hold on. Good throw coming into Spire. Two down in the third inning. And Tom Lawless will come up and bat for Pendleton. And then stay in the game and play third. Tom Lawless. Tom Lawless 
Lewis during the regular season had two hits. He only had 25 at bats in the entire season. And then started when Pendleton could not answer the bell in Atley Hammaker's game in Candlestick. In that game, he went one for two. Lawless must be remarkable to be able to play reasonably well with only 25 at bats he hardly ever gets into a game <laughs> but he stays ready and that's what impresses Whitey yeah he's really got to be something to do that one and one the good utility man he stays ready and then he's not a moaner and groaner about not getting a chance to play and disrupting he's, he's got to be a positive influence because he doesn't get to play that much and yet when he does play he better be ready one and one to count. Ozzie Smith at first with two out in the third. And the Cardinals leading the Giants 4 nothing. He's the perfect guy. Play me or keep me. <laughs> one and one to Tom Lawless. Of course, the Cardinals cannot certainly be overconfident leading four to nothing because they remember when they were down four to nothing to San Francisco and scrambled back. We got a long way to go. One and one to Tom. Watch for the pitch out. There it is, but no throw to first. Ozzy's holding on. So two pitch outs, but no base running. They, uh, Ozzy is, is, does not have a good read. I'm, I'm kind of surprised, but he. He wants to go, but he's just not that sure. Craig trying to guess along with him. Two balls and one strike. Ozzie not going. That's a strike. Two and two. Oh, I've said it before only because people before me said it. Speed does not go into a slump, and it just, it disrupts. You got it. You disrupt. And the most disruptive force tonight, a home run from a least likely quarter, Jose Okindo. That's hit to center. Chili Davis coming up, base hit. And when the ball is bobbled, Ozzie's going to third to throw. He's in there. Down to second goes Lawless. Now, Ozzie Smith can't get any help from the coach when he sees that ball. He's going to go. And here's Chili's throw. Chili will get an error for dropping that bouncer. So the error, as Ozzie hesitates, maybe Chili took his eye off the ball just to see what Ozzie was up to. He, I was going to say, had to make a perfect throw, Ben, because the ball is there ahead of him, but it's to the left field side of the bag. And now here comes another meeting. The runners at second and third. With two down, the batter will be Tony Pena, a right-hand hitter. And Craig immediately goes to the pen again. So it shows you the fortunes of a young man. Joe Price, five innings, allowed one hit a candlestick. He allows two hits in his hot water here in two-thirds of an inning tonight. Kelly Downs coming in from the giant bullpen. third in the third inning and the Cardinals trying to break it wide open leading four to nothing. Pena singled in the second inning but that was against Hammaker. Strike. Kelly Down 27 year old come the 25th of October the mainstay of the giant rotation in the first half went to the bullpen after the Giants acquired Rick Russell in August. On one. Fastball hit the right field deep enough already going back makes the catch and that's that no runs two hits and one error and at the end of three it remains four nothing Cardinals now here's a look back at a very special Tom Wallace now at third base for the injured Terry Pendleton and Jeffrey Leonard will start it off for San Francisco Remember on a 3-1 changeup in the first inning. And the chant, the taunting chant. They've got a little bit of John 
Kibler, the plate umpire. Pena making sure that John is okay. Four runs, seven hits for the Cardinals. No runs, three hits for the Giants. Top of the fourth inning. Danny Cox pitching on three days rest, and he normally does very well under those circumstances. Twist that bat like he's dialing it in. 0-1. One, one. Curveball hit right back off Cox's glove, and Leonard will have a base hit. So Leonard trying to answer the crowd the only way a player can, and he's two for two. That's the best way to answer it, and he sends it right back up the middle. Cox, for a minute, thought he had it. It was a breaking ball. He thought he had it right there, and then he realizes he doesn't, and he chases it, but a bit too late. So Leonard aboard, and Will Clark the batter. Clark grounded to Jim Lindemann in the first inning. We now see they have changed it. They have flashed E1 on the scoreboard. Take the hit away from Leonard and charge the pitcher, Danny Cox, with an error. One ball and one strike. Ball. And it is the second double play turned in by the Cardinals. Remember, the Giants had racked up 10, and now they're being haunted by that same play tonight. A chopper to the hole. Tommy Herr clubs it up. No runs, no hits, an error, nobody left. At the end of three and a half, four nothing St. Louis. Goes into a slide. He comes up. Look at his left elbow. He doesn't like that, and he says something, and it's something about next time. You just think, Ben, that's one of the guys that Jeff said he liked. Yeah, right. I wouldn't want to be on his list. <laughs> Four to nothing, St. Louis. And in the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Willie McGee, Jose Akendo, and Danny Cox against Kelly Down. So the Giants forced to use three pitchers, and we're just in the fourth inning. McGee singled home Terry Pendleton from third in the second inning. And then he rode home on the three-run blast by Okindo. Right. 1-1. One, one. With Kelly Downs in the game, there are only two players who have failed to make an appearance in this seven-game league championship series. One Cardinal, one Giant. Field. Mike Aldretti is there. Chili Davis coming over. The two players who have failed to see service yet, Steve Lake of the Cardinals, Matt Williams of the Giants, and for the Jose of Kendo Marching and Chowder Society, another look at that three-run home run. There was no doubt about it, Ben. It just didn't barely make it. That no. ball hit the facade. A line drive home run by Okendo. Now hitting left-handed against Kelly Down. Ball one. Danny Cox on deck. 4-0 Cardinals in the fourth. When the Giants bat in the fifth, Friendly, Spire, and Uribe 
the pitcher do up four. If you're wondering what the Danny Cox is swinging the on deck circle, it's just a big old lead pipe, heavy, make that bat feel lighter. He got all kinds of things now. One and one. Two and one, the Condor Kendo. Whitey's secret weapon. Played everywhere but catch and hit the biggest home run of the year. He's really made himself a valuable, valuable player. Uh, Johnny Lewis, the Cardinal coach, working with him. He's, he's one of the hardest workers he's ever been around. Two and two the count. And he slaps a one hopper at Uribe. Akindo is 5'10 and 160 pounds, but he looks like the Colossus of Rhodes in this game tonight. Danny Cox. Danny Cox coming up. Cox struck out in the second inning. And he promptly bangs it to center. Base hit. Cherry was thinking of throwing to first, but Will Clark was down the line. If Will Clark had raced to the bag, would have tried to throw to first to get Cox. He was playing very shallow and in right center field. It's been done from the right fielder, but I've never seen it from the center fielder. But he's about ready to let fire. But as you say, Ben, uh, Will Clark wasn't there, not expecting it. A base hit for Danny Cox, his second in the series. Eight hits for the Cardinals to lead four to nothing. A windbreaker will be brought out to Danny Cox, and Vince Coleman will be the batter. Brought out the medium and he wants the extra large because they had to jack it out there, but he just couldn't get into it. Well, he's 6'4, 225. Big man born in Northampton, England. And here is Vince Coleman. Single but was picked off second, struck out in the second. tonight against Hammerker when Coleman who was 0 for 11 right handed got a base hit Ozzie Smith got a base hit right handed and so did Willie McGee 0 and 2 Kelly Downs is one of those pitchers when you scout him you just simply say he's got good stuff Good fastball, good curveball, good control. You know, he grew up in a in a town with a wonderful name in Utah. You know the name of the town? Bountiful. I like to come from Bountiful, Utah. Ground ball foul outside of first. His own name is is, is quite catchy. Oh, I down. First time I heard it, all I can think of is a racetrack. Yeah. A country racetrack. <laughs> Maybe in Ireland. Ireland. Kelly Downs. Yes. Daily Dumb. He's got a racehorse at the plate in Vince Coleman. Danny Cox at first. Will Clark on the line back of him. 0 and 2 to Coleman. Turned him around. 1 and 2. Both benches intent. It's too early to show too much emotion. Check swing and a roller to the right side to Spire, who takes care of Coleman, so no runs, one hit, a man left. At the end of four, 4 nothing St. Louis, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. L.A. Law, the show retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. If you are keeping score along with us, as you can see, the official score, and actually it's plural, Nick Peters, Jack Herman, and they have credited Jeffrey Leonard with a single. Remember the ball that Leonard hit back at Danny Cox had got away from him. So first, we assumed hit. They flashed error. Now they have corrected it to hit. 
that would be a walk in the park for Danny Cox to go nine and 88 pitches. Hmm. Renly Spire and Uribe coming up in the fifth inning. Four nothing St. Louis. Scott Gerelch is down in the bullpen. So with the pitching spot due up fourth, if they get anything going, you know Craig will hit for down. Right. Scott Gerelch. Good breaking ball. 0 and 2. Brenly struck out in the second. That's been his big problem trying to make contact. It, the big problem has been that ball in the outside part of play. They've been throwing it to him and getting to widen that zone, and he's been chasing it. When he hit the ball well, it's because he was able to discipline himself and, and really hit strikes. One ball and two strikes. The second inning last night, the Cardinals scored one and made it stand up. In the second inning tonight, the Cardinals scored four, and the Giants trying to recover. Hit up the middle, hits the mound, and fights its way through into center field. So the leadoff men have tried to come back. Uribe single to open up the third. Leonard single to open up the fourth. And Brenly singles to open up the fifth. There's a case of trying to hit that outside corner, but if you're going to miss, miss out of the strike zone. He missed towards the uh, hitter, Brenly, who jumped on him and gets a base hit. Chris Fire rounded to short in the second inning, playing for Robbie Thompson, a slumping Robbie Thompson, and Spire getting the spot. Four nothing Cardinals in the fifth, so Brenly doesn't figure to be doing any running. Short lead. Uribe on deck. Strike. Spire had two previous at bats in the series. He is 0 for 3. One ball, one strike. Eight hits for the Cardinals, no runs, five hits for the Giants. The big blow. Like a bolt of lightning, a three-run home run from Jose Aquindo. One and one. Ball two. Such a big bolt because you don't expect it. Maybe Lindemann or somebody like that. It's almost like they were talking that the Giants were using a prevent defense, uh, if you use a football term, give them the singles because nobody can hit it out of the park. And Okendo did. Least likely award. Fastball and chop to her. He feeds Ozzy, who throws to Lindemann for third double play. And what an amazing the pivot Ozzy Smith comes up with. He jumps straight in the air to get away from the slide. Watch the pivot by Ozzie Smith. It handcuffs her. Now watch what he does here. Straight up. Interesting, too. You can remember the signs in San Francisco that said Ozzie turns flips, Uribe turns double plays. And tonight, Ozzie has answered those signs as the Cardinals have come up with three double plays, and he has been the middleman in all three. That was sensational because Brentley really thought he was going to take him out, and he had a good chance, but all of a sudden, he just jumped straight in the air. Jose Uribe with two out in the fifth. Brentley gets in close enough. He thinks he's going to take him out, but look at here. Great play and a fine stretch at the other end by Jim Lindemann. So two down. And a line drive base hit to center. So the Giants have been frustrated tonight by their favorite weapon all year long. The double play bailed them out. The double play got them here. And it would really be ironic if it is the double play that sinks them. Here comes Robbie Thompson to bat for Kelly Down. The Giants have six hits in four and two-third innings, but the Cardinal infield has been sparkling.
Bobby Thompson didn't start just because of those numbers. 105. He hits one in the air to shallow right. Okindo is there. No runs. Two hits. One left. And Ozzie Smith, the man of the moment, as the Cardinals lead 4-0. Looking at Ozzie Smith for 10 years as he faces Scott Gurrell. For 10 years I've watched him. And each time I think I have seen him do it all, he adds yet another paragraph. Phenomenal, incredible, acrobatic, whatever you want to say. He is really something to watch. Well, Uribe has had a great series, and, and Uribe himself says Ozzy's the best. Yep. Fouled away, down the line, one and two. I'll tell you, baseball fans are blessed with the great shortstops that are around. Fernandez of Toronto. Oh, yes. Oh, a lot of good ones. But he is so acrobatic. He is so spectacular. There isn't anybody quite like him. A little chopper foul. Osborne Earl Smith. Here's something else. It is 4-0 Cardinals, bottom of the fifth inning. The Cardinals have turned in three double plays in five innings. Fouled away. It's been Hamaker for two innings, four runs and five hits. Joe Price, two-thirds of an inning, two hits. Kelly Downs, an inning and a third, one hit. And now Scott Gorelts. Looks like the split finger. Gorel throws it very hard, and that's one of the things that Roger Craig likes about him. He had a finger injury, and it affected his delivery on the fastball, but certainly doesn't bother him with that split finger. Had to be. Look at that thing. Just a whoop. Drops from straight down. When you mention about his finger injury as he works on Tommy Herb, on the 1st of September against Montreal, he broke the tip of his right middle finger trying to field a line drive off the bat of Jeff Reed. He instinctively reached out barehanded for the line drive and broke the finger. He missed 22 games, but he was able to appear in five games before the LCS. 0-1. From Urbana, Illinois, Scott Gorelts. He'll be 26 the end of October. Tommy Herb grounded out and struck out 0 for 2. He has four hits in the series, hitting 167. 1 and 2. When the Giants bat in the sixth inning, they'll have the top of the order Aldretti, Mitchell, and Leonard. Two strikes. Tommy Herr, a solid performer at second base. And even though that was a difficult chance, they still got the double play as it appeared like he was caught in between hops and got the ball to Ozzie. Out away. The paid attendance tonight, exactly. The same as the other games at Bush, 55,331, a record, not for tonight as much as for the entire series. Every game at Candlestick Park was a baseball record, as was every game here. Two and two. Seven games played before just under 400,000. High slicing fly ball down the left field line. Leonard trying to get to it, runs out of room. Once again, we'd like to remind our viewers we'll be selecting the NBC Miller Lite player of the game at the conclusion of the ball game. Her followed by Lindemann. Fastball banged up the middle, base hit. Nine hits for the Cardinals, at least one against every giant pitcher. 
pitcher. So Tommy Herr is one for three, and Jim Lindeman, who was the only Cardinal in the starting lineup without a hit. Everybody else with one, including Danny Cox. Nine hits for St. Louis. Remember, Pendleton had a base hit, and his replacement, Lawless, picked up a hit. Breaking ball, line, great play by Mitchell. Otherwise, that's down the line. So Lindemann is prevented from joining the club on a great play by Kevin Mitchell. That's been one of the big, uh, one of the pleasant surprises is the way Mitchell has played third base. He says he prefers to play the outfield, but I tell you, he has really done a job at third base for the Giants. So Mitchell perhaps taking an extra base hit away from Lindemann. That thing was heading for the corner. Her holding it first and with two out, Tom Lawless, who singled in the third. who were wondering about the Cardinal attack and where it was, it is certainly on the scene tonight. Four runs, nine hits. They have yet to be retired in order. Two and oh. Talking before the game, they were talking about games that they won. Six hits and they won a doubleheader against Montreal. They made nine hits and won three games. So they know that they're not going to really give you that big attack, but tonight, so far, nine hits. That's an outburst, and especially only to the fifth inning. Right. Two and one. Lawless followed by the catcher, Tony Pena. on the sliding Tommy Herr. Had him leaning a little bit. Just a low throw. He jumps right over him. Time for the moment. Looks like Clark erased the mark. <laughs> Doing a little housekeeping down there. Two and one to Lawless. Herr, a very good base dealer. 19 out of 23 during the regular year. Three. Three and one. Bradley doesn't believe it. So we'll see if they play run in here. Three balls, one strike. Where the hitter is not obligated, of course, to swing at ball four. Yep, they do. And there's ball four. The run is at first and second with two out. And Tony Pena coming up. The first base on balls given to the Cardinals tonight. With Chris Beyer coming in to join in the conversation, you have to believe that they're just switching signs. Gorelts hasn't been out there that much in this uh, championship series, so they better get together and no cross-ups. And in case you're wondering, no one throwing for the moment anyway in the giant bullpen. But they are sending Mike Lacoste down to the pen right now. So here's Tony Pena, single, fly to right. One reason coming in on him, Pena both times went the other way. There's Lacoste. That was a 93-mile-an-hour jam job to move him off the plate. And Tony will give it that little extra when he gets out of the way. Tony, who was slumping so badly since being traded to the Cardinals, has come alive in the series, hitting almost 370. Strike. One and one. And there hasn't been a peep about him seeing the ball better because of the glasses. Not a word. 
think the tip off was that long shot he hit into deep center field at Candlestick. And from that moment on, he'd been hitting the ball sharply. Popped up, foul ground, racing over his Brenly. Can't get it. And down he goes. One of the Cardinals came off the bench. We could just see his cap. But he didn't hold him. We'll just see who it is if we can. He finds a dugout, which is very wise when you're at the opposition. He goes in, now he's just going to protect himself, and now they're going to help him. It's Jack Clark. That's what I was wondering about. It's Jack Clark. I had the feeling it was going to be Jack, but I couldn't say for sure until I saw him. Did you see when he helped him? After the ball went by. After it went by him. One and two, the count. Two on, two out on the fifth, four nothing St. Louis. So Pena really chasing that and the count one and two. Pena's a free swinger. He didn't have much of a swing at that. He chased it. If he hits it, it's a little ground ball. One ball and two strikes. Time. No pitch. I always marvel. Now, John Kibble has been around a long time, but you realize Gorel didn't know time was called, and John walked right out in front of Brenly. I mean, you talk about being naked unto the world. Gorel could have drilled him. I think it's one of those uh, moves by instinct. It's not too bright, but you just instinctively move up, and you see them all doing. I can see him calling time, but not stepping in front of the catcher. One and two. Chopper foul over the head of Nick Leva, bouncing into the official giant box. And there aren't very many smiles over there. Bob Lurie and his wife, Connie. Agonizing time of the fifth inning of the seventh game, and it's all St. Louis, four to nothing. Pena had a big hack, and down he goes. Garrell strikes out two. The Cardinals leave two, and at the end of five, four nothing St. Louis. Strike one to Aldretti. He struck out Mitchell in the third inning, make it two, and he got Brenly. Already grounded out, hit into a double play. His double play was started by Jim Lindeman to Ozzie Smith to Danny Cox. Two balls, one strike. Kevin Mitchell waiting on deck to be followed by Jeffrey Leonard. Only in the second inning, they had a base hit in the first inning. They had two hits in the third. They had a base hit in the fourth and two hits in the fifth, but they've come up empty each time. Three times because of the double play. Three and one. You just turn that fastball over a little bit. Three and two to Mike Aldretti. Aldretti this year was the best three and two hitter on the giant team. He hit over 380. Now we'll see what he does three and two tonight. One of the top cardinal hitters three and two, Ozzie Smith. in the air and sliced to shallow left. Vince Coleman as the ball drifts. One away. That slows up a tendency that was building. The leadoff man for the Giants had gotten a base hit three consecutive innings in the third, fourth, and fifth. But they stop already here in the sixth, and the batter is Kevin Mitchell. Lined to short, struck out, and made a dazzling catch of the ball hit by Jim Lindeman in the fifth inning. Strike. And that was a big 
perfect strikeout of Mitchell. That was in the third inning when he thought he had him struck out with a curveball, called the ball, and he came back three and two and threw a curveball to get him. Now he starts him with a fastball, and Kevin's still saying, no, no way. Well, he got the corner in the count 0 and 1. So he tried it again, but missed. One ball, one strike. Danny Cox. Twice on three days rest he pitched this year. Won both times, including the clincher against Montreal. In there. And Kevin doesn't believe that. And the Giants are growling from the dugout. It just brings to mind what the great Ted Williams always talked about. There are three strike zones. The pitchers, the umpires, and yours. And you better know all three of them if you're going to play. And Jose Morales. Save the hitting coach for the Giants, hollering at Kibler that the pitch was too low. And he's thrown nothing but fastballs so far. One and two. And another fastball got him. And then Kevin Mitchell says something to Kibler. Six. The Cardinals four and the Giants nothing. Okendo with the three run home run in the second inning. The biggest swing of the night. Four runs, ten hits for the Cardinals. No runs, six hits for the Giants. To look ahead if you're not keeping score, Will Clark, Chili Davis, and Bob Brenly as we see Willie McGee. Who was erased on that heads up play by Will Clark? Ball three. On deck, Danny Cox. All the scoring back in the second inning. And there is ball four to Jose Akindo. Second walk given up by Scott Durrell. And Danny Cox coming up. And that gives Danny Cox a chance to help his own cause. Will Clark comes in to set up a defense based on balls at that particular time. Not very good pitching. With everything else, that number eight spot has gotten for the Cardinals, hitting well over 400. That's also the fourth walk given to the number eight hitter. Danny Cox struck out and singled. And, of course, you don't wait if Gorelts gets into any trouble. Craig will have to make another change. Will Clark throwing to Spire. So the sacrifice works. Okendo takes second with two down. And the batter will be Vince Coleman. Mike Lacoste and Craig Lefferts throwing now in the giant bullpen. Lefferts the left-hander. Coleman single to center struck out and grounded out four nothing Cardinals bottom of the sixth
Cleveland's base hit leading off in the first inning his first hit of the series as a right handed batter he had been over 11 and that was the overture against Adley Hamaker who lasted but two innings. Vince Coleman. Okendo with a walk, sacrifice, wild pitch to third. Coleman over anxious, trying to golf that one. One and two. strikes the count. So in the inning, McGee doubled but was thrown out rounding second. A Kendall walks and works his way to third. And with two out, Coleman trying to pick him up. Ball three. On deck, Ozzie Smith. with that one. Here's another look at what Ozzy can do besides turning double plays. He's been the middle man on three. Up the ladder to take a line drive, pop it up and convert it into an out and take a base hit away from Jeffrey Leonard. Otherwise, Leonard is three for three and that had to be very pleasing for Ozzy. That was the next time. It's almost like he tipped it up there. He knew he couldn't make the grab. He just kept it in the air. And now Whitey Herzog, got, he's got some real jackrabbits on the bases. Two out, and Coleman's going, and there's no throw. You talk about being impaled on the horns of a dilemma. Bob Brenly had nowhere to go. You usually get that sign from the manager. I'm sure Roger Craig just said, don't throw, throw through. You're going to have to get Ozzy Smith. One ball and no strikes. Ozzy is grounded out, singled, and struck out. Ball two. On deck, Tommy Hurd. The Cardinals threatened to break the game open in the third. They had runners at second and third, but Pena flied out. They had two on in the fifth, and Pena struck out. Now they have second and third, and two out, and three and oh to Ozzy Smith. Okendo at third, Coleman at second, two out. Down the pipe, three and one. Tommy Herb on deck, a switch hitter. High foul down the right field line, out of play. to third, Coleman to second with two outs. Burrell off the rubber, timeout. Remember we were talking about three and two with Mike Aldretti and Ozzy, the best Cardinal three and two. Series. The count has gone three and two to Ozzie Smith, and he has three walks and a 
single, and that means Roger Craig time. He'll want Craig Lefferts to turn Tommy Hur around and make him bat right-handed. This inning, you can't catch a walk, and that's how they're in deep trouble, base on balls. Lefferts coming in like it's a track meet. So Craig Lefferts is the fifth giant pitcher, and it is four to nothing, St. Louis. Well, Kendo at third, Coleman at second, Smith at first. Two out. Strike. So standing room only here at Bush Stadium. And the Cardinals trying to make a big move, leading 4-0. Continues to throw in the giant bullpen. So Roger Craig has been forced to air out the bullpen. Hammaker, Price, Downs, Gerelts, and Leopard. And of course, Hammaker is the one who got him into trouble. Charged with four runs and five hits in two innings. Line drive. Station. Taste, there's only one light beer. And by Buick and your 
Buick Dealey, the great American road belongs to Buick. There's the official Cardinal box. Of course, Gussie Bush, August A. Bush Jr. officially, long gone. He came out here, and that's his son, who's big. August State Bush the third, and I'll tell you, look at that scoreboard. Danny Dreesen, having batted for Lindemann, stays in the game at first base. And Will Clark will start it off 6 0 St. Louis. For the Giants, not only being beaten, they have been shut out. They have gone 19 innings without scoring. Way out in front of it. One and one. He's made 65 pitches, uh, Ben. And I tell you, his strike to ball ratio is something. 43 strikes, 22 balls. Hmm. One and one, the count to Clark, who is 0 for 2. Slicing foul off third. Tommy Lawless down the line, but that's going to be well back into the crowd. And the count, one and two. The Giants, as you can see, a four-run deficit was the most, and the Giants suffered that humility when the Cardinals did it. And they have just been stuffed tonight. Six runs, 11 hits for the Cardinals. Three double plays. Don't figure in the line score. The board did figure prominently in the game. Busted bat and a base hit into right field. And that bat shattered into three pieces. The handle at home plate, two pieces. There's a sliver just in front of the meat end. And the bat boy just picked it up. Still doesn't top that one we saw in Yankee Stadium. Howell hit the home run on a broken, broken bat. bat. But here's a three-piece job, so unusual. The pattern trying to be established again by the Giants. Three consecutive innings and four times in the game, the leadoff man has singled. Chili Davis has had a very long series. Two ground balls tonight. And hits another ground ball to Dreesen. He'll overhand the Cox covering. So Chili Davis tops out, Clark advancing to second, and Bob Brenly the batter. Chili Davis, no RBIs. With only three hits and 19 at bats, and he is an integral part of the giant attack. One of the many reasons why they have just been stopped dead. Great cardinal pitching and key defensive plays have gotten them where they are. It goes hand in hand. It's almost like the chicken and the egg. Uh, you can't have good defense without good pitching, and the Cardinals have really been getting pretty good pitching. Brenly struck out in single ground ball to Ozzy. He looks Clark back and throws to Dreesen. Just making it easier for Danny Cox. Uh, Chili Davis jumped on the first pitch. Brenly has just hit the first pitch, and uh, Cox keeps, keeps throwing strikes and hitting that first pitch just plays right into his hands. Danny Cox, in six and two third innings, has allowed seven hits, no walks, struck out three. And the batter, Chris Fire, grounded to short and hit into a double play. And I'd be shocked if he swings at the first pitch, I'll tell you. Yeah, because he, he's been around so long. He's been around, and he knows how to play. He'll make him throw at least one. I'd be shocked. Strike. 0-1. 37-year-old Chris Fire. And on deck, Jose Uribe. The Cardinals with four in the second and added two more in the sixth and have a commanding six to nothing lead. If they get down to Lacoste, they'd hit for him and Don Robinson is throwing in the bullpen. One and one. All of the Giants alone with their thoughts right now. It's been a long year. 168 games have been played. This is 169, and no one has won anything yet. The boys are a lot to lose. Mm. Strike one and two. We're talking about official games. Spring training oh, games yeah. don't even count. No. 
about 32 or so mm. spring training games. Mm. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. And if there was ever anybody who wondered about what might have been, it's Candy Maldonado. All three to Chris Fire. That certainly was a tough play for Candy, but I think the game, if it ends like this, that the Giants will remember is that uh, game three when they blow oh. the 4 nothing lead. 4 nothing lead, and the Cardinals got off the deck and beat him 6-5. And the Cardinals had that spring training lineup in there. I mean, looked like the B club. Herzog is not taking anything for granted, especially if Cox walks his first man. Remember, he's pitching on three days rest, and they're beginning to move around in the Cardinal bullpen. Three and two. Breaking ball got him. Oh, did he break off a dandy. His fourth strikeout, and at the end of six and a half, six nothing St. Louis. In Missouri, they think they can hear her in Minnesota. It is six nothing Cardinals in the seventh. And a strike to Tom Wallace, finishing up for Terry Pendleton, who pulled a thigh muscle going for first to third on a base hit back in the second inning. Tried to continue and gave way, and Lawless singled in the third. Fouled away. 0-2. If there is nothing else to do and you're leading six to nothing, there is always Jeffrey Leonard. Listen. That was really the ultimate sign. He misspelled his name. <laughs> L E N A R D was the spelling. <laughs> That'll really frost you. Oh, and two to Tom Lawless. Who has singled and walked tonight. Lawless has as many hits in the series as he had for the entire season. Down he goes. So Mike Lacoste picks up a strikeout. There's the misspelling. There it is. <laughs> Stir it up. Tony Pena has singled to right, flied to right, struck out. His base hit ignited the fire in the second inning. His single sent Pendleton to third. It was followed by a single by McGee for a run, and then the three-run blast by Okendo. Bang to center, base hit. So Pena is two for four. Tony is hitting the ball very well now. He's 8 for 21. With a line single to center. 2 for 4 tonight. And the batter is Willie McGee. It'll be interesting to see if Whiting runs him. He's got himself a pretty good lead. But remember, that was the big problem when they, they had that brawl. I think when Coleman stole second and third, the Cardinals were leading 8 to 1. Precipitated eventually Frank Williams hitting Coleman and then the brawl. And out of that brawl, Mike Kruko suffered bruised ribs and went on the DL. One out, 0 on 1 to count to Pena. McGee single flied out and doubled, but was hung out to dry, rounding second. Fly ball to Leonard. Two down in the seventh inning. Jose Okendo, who certainly is wearing the mantle of the hero tonight. Okendo with a three-run home run, grounded out, and scored on a base hit. When the Giants bat in the eighth, they have Jose Uribe, a hitter for Lacoste, and then Aldretti. There goes Payne. 
Pena, and the pitch is dropped as Pena slides in. Brindley had it get away. Uh-oh. Uh, that's, uh, that's what we were wondering, only because it was a retaliation for what happened during the season. And I'm sure they said, oh, no, we're just playing our normal game. But you got two men out and Pena running, and it looked like it may have even caught Brindley by surprise. Pena, during the regular year, had stolen six out of seven. One ball and no strikes. And there's another uh, message. You they, had. they couldn't send messages clear if they'd have gone to Western Union. I mean, you show me up, I'll show you. There's no love here uh, between these two ball clubs because this is a message right here. 91 mile an hour message, too. Yes, sir. Two balls and no strikes. Tell you, before the game, they were talking about this Cowtown business. One of the players, the Cardinal players, said, listen, he's so dumb, he thinks milk comes from ants. I had to write that down. <laughs> two balls and no So there's truck. no love between these two They're going to walk a kendo. Milk comes from ants. <laughs> there it is. That's what they're talking about. We love this Cowtown. <laughs> the ball four to a kendo. Runners at first and second. And with two down, Danny Cox coming up. has a seven-hit shutout working tonight thanks to three Cardinal double plays. On one. So Tony Pena who appeared to infuriate Lacoste by stealing second, or say a kendo at first, 0-1 to Danny Cox. Remember, Cox got that base hit off the fastball off Kruko, and then really looked bad on the curveball, so Lacoste threw the curveball for the first pitch. I said, if he stays with it. Danny struck out, single to center, and then sacrificed. Fastball. One ball, one strike. running out on San Francisco. Uribe, a hitter for the pitcher, and Aldretti in the eighth. Ball two. keeping track of the giant maneuvers. They have Kruko, Russell, and Robinson. Right-hand pitchers left. On the bench, Craig has one left-hand hitter, Harry Spillman, and then he has Melvin Williams and Maldonado. So Craig has used six pitchers. Six to nothing, St. Louis. Deuce is wild on Danny Cox, and it's wild in St. Louis. Now on a full count, the runners will be going. Boy, you can't let you can't go to three and two in a spot like that when you're so far behind that eight ball. And it happened on the heels of the intentional walk. So Payne, you're ready to go from second, or Kendall from first with two out. Runners go. And as a ball hit back to Lacoste, who flips to Will Clark. No runs, one hit, and two left. And at the end of seven, Cardinal six, Giants nothing. It's a pathway that leads from here to tomorrow. and enthusiasm and optimism and gazing towards Minnesota. And they're getting in a few last licks. One sign concerning Jeffrey Leonard said one flap down and goodbye. <laughs> Cox 
Hicks as he completes seven innings, 75 pitches, 50 strikes, 25 balls, still two to one. Jose Uribe, two for two. He'll be followed by Harry Spillman, the last left-hander on the bench for San Francisco. saw Spire break the string by taking going three and two and striking out. Now Uribe takes the first pitch. One and oh. In there. Don Robinson is throwing in the giant bullpen. He would be the seventh pitcher to come in the game for San Francisco tonight. pinch hitter Milner Thompson and now Spillman Harry with that pinch hit home run but the Giants came up a buck short anyway and the Cardinals won it 6 5 right curveballs fastballs whatever he's throwing now six run lead will do it Danny Cox right on target Another breaking ball. Oh and two. One ball and two strikes. Whitey Herzog's words at the start of the league championship series really come back now when he said. I don't know how we got here. Meaning, of course, with Jack Clark hurt. And then when he got there, it didn't look like the Cardinals could score any runs. And they got to the sixth game. Then he said tonight, I don't know how we got here. And you have a feeling he'll be unpacking in Minnesota saying, I don't know how we got here. He does a great imitation of Casey Stengel, but he also has got a lot of Casey in him. All three. He can sound just like the great case. And why, I can't believe, like when we asked about why you're playing Johnny Morris. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you'll know why he's in Minnesota if they hold on to this lead. Half swing on a breaking ball, and it's still 3-2. That's Danny Cox leading 6 nothing. Comes back 3-2 with a breaking ball. He's smelling it now. You can see that. He wants to close it. Remarkable record in a young career of winning clutch games. The clincher against the Mets in 85. Number three in the LCS against Los Angeles when the Cardinals were down 0-2. Ground ball to Dreesen. And there are four outs left between St. Louis and Minnesota. Roger Craig knows it, and so do the young Cardinals. Mike Aldretti, as Jeffrey Leonard sits quietly for the moment at least, not center stage. Aldretti is grounded out, hit into a double play, and flied to left. And a change. Holy mackerel, he's got it all going now. He's got every pitch going, and he's got it in the strike zone, and he starts ahead of these hitters, and when you do that, you really got him thinking. That thing was 72 miles an hour. Then come back with a high inside fastball. One and one to count. Cox has allowed seven hits, struck out four, and he's gone from a 72-mile-an-hour change to a high inside 90-mile-an-hour fastball. 
and one. Fouled away. It was Danny Cox who started the 1985 World Series. He started game two and the Cardinals won. He started game six and the Cardinals might very well have won it, but he left and the Cardinals lost. And now he's trying to clinch it and drive his ball club to Minnesota and everyone up and at him. From Northampton, England. He's bigger than the arch here in St. Louis, Danny Cox. One and two. He was doing a little umpire. He was heading for the dugout. <laughs> Can't blame him. Ran to pitch and hoped. John Tudor whose magnificent effort last night kept the Cardinals alive, gave them the opportunity to win tonight. A hot one smothered by Lawless. Throws him out. And the birds are cooking. How does the advanced new Chevy Halfton stand up to Ford? Chevy gives you more standard power than Ford, more cattle. The Cardinals down, came back to win last night to stay alive. The teams who were able to do that, to come back and win the final two, Cincinnati in 72 against Pittsburgh, Philadelphia against Houston in 1980, Los Angeles against Montreal in 1981. San Diego against Chicago in 1984, and as Don Robinson becomes the seventh Giant pitcher, realistically you add to that list St. Louis against San Francisco in 1987. Vince Coleman single struck out, grounded out, and walked. Stole a base in the sixth inning, finally in the series, and has scored a run. Right. Coleman, Smith, and her. For the Giants, and there'll be one last appearance. It'll be Mitchard, then Jeffrey Leonard, and Will Clark. Leonard hitting second in the ninth inning. And I'm sure this large crowd will say goodbye to him. And Vince Coleman is blown away by Don Robinson. One out. And outside of Coleman, it wouldn't appear anyone in the stadium cares. And that's about it. Leonard brought a lot of pressure on himself, but he's handled it well. Ozzie Smith, a tower of strength defensively, the middleman as the Cardinals turn three double plays, also singled and walked tonight. One ball and no strikes. On deck, Tommy Hurd. But the biggest blow of the night was from the least likely player, Jose Okindo, a three-run home run. Ball two. There he is, celebrating his baby's birthday the best way a ball player knows how. Two balls and no strikes. In there. Price, Downs, Garelt, Leffords, Lacoste, and Robinson. A litany of frustration for the Giants. Four runs charged to Hamaker. He will be the loser. Two runs charged to Garelt. And a quiet, downcast Giant bench, to say the least. 
Strike two. One hundred and sixty-eight games. Thirty some odd exhibition games. Strike three to Ozzy. With all those games, they'll still go back, I'm sure, to game three. Game three, and the fact that with the Cardinals down, they let him get up last night, and the Cardinals have now just about blown Roger Craig and his ball club out of the water. Tommy Hurd grounded out, struck out, single twice, and hits it to center. Chili Davis trying to run it down. He's there. the St. Louis Cardinals with three outs between themselves and Minnesota go to work in the ninth inning. Right. Two inning and three outs as the Cardinals ever since the second inning when they scored four have very much been in charge. That they have and it goes right out to the middle of that diamond with Danny Cox in charge, but Whitey Herzog has his bullpen gone. He's going to hope that Danny Cox nails it down, but I'll tell you, if he comes close to it, Todd Morrell, there you see him, he's going to get ready. And a little earlier, he had Ken Daly throwing. That was in the seventh inning. So the Giants are face-to-face -face with going down again. the Cardinals a magnificent pitching effort no National League team has ever registered back to back shutouts in the league championship series but the Cardinals after shutting down San Francisco last night have Danny Cox three outs away from doing it again Ball one to Kevin Mitchell. That's pitch 92 for Danny Cox. 61 strikes, 31 balls. He has really been in control of his game. One ball and no strikes to Mitchell. Lined out and struck out twice. Hitting 241 in the series. Ball two. And we mentioned at the start of the game how the Giants office employees were going to watch this game in otherwise empty Candlestick Park and listen to the roar from Bush Stadium in St. Louis and how odd that must have sounded. A crowd cheering in St. Louis echoing around the empty seats and rafters of Candlestick. And I would think Candlestick is even more deserted now. The noisier it gets here in St. Louis. Jeffrey Leonard on deck one last time. Three and one to Kevin Mitchell. Three and one. Hit down the left field line. Foul and out of play. The Giants can't buy. Executive scoreless innings without one. This team that had hit so many home runs in the early going, nine home runs to one, stopped dead in the water. Three and two. Line drive over Ozzy into left center for a base hit. Coleman to cut it off and Kevin Mitchell holding. And here comes Jeffrey one more time. <laughs> Both flaps down. Well, he has certainly tried tonight. He is two for three. The third time up, Ozzie Smith took a hit away from him. And that sign about the $50,000, remember, that was part of an incentive in a contract three years ago where should he be named the most valuable player in the LCS, it would be worth $50,000 to him. Ball one. 
really looking like he's maybe overthrowing. Mike Rourke has come out. Pena's going to listen to the conversation, and I'm sure it's going to be a case of just be yourself, Danny. You've been pitching well. Be yourself. Okay. And he certainly hasn't labored too hard. 98 there. pitches, man. Todd Worrell throwing back of him when the inning began. One ball and no strike. Many of the Giants have come off the bench and are now on the steps. Quite a few of them have moved out along with policemen. A sure sign that the game is coming to an end. 6-0 St. Louis. In there. Two and one. Danny Cox, who has been magnificent in this final game. On three days rest. Ball three, but he could be running out of fuel now. Whitey's not going to really let him go too far with War Warrell in that bullpen and the way he's throwing. He's got a six to nothing lead, but he wants to nail it down. Three and one to count. Ground ball to the right side. Tommy Hurd, Ozzie Smith, that's all. As he does a side straddle hop and lands on top. Kevin Mitchell. He knew Mitchell was going to maybe staple him to that left field wall, so he was going to make one out sure. And once he gets the ball, he just jumps straight up, just straddles him. Mitchell coming down hard. Ozzy had no intention of going to first base. Leonard running hard. Mitchell taking him out of the play. Mitchell was very lucky that Ozzy Smith didn't step on his hands, although he'll have plenty of time to heal <laughs> if he did. Will Clark, ball one. Clark is grounded out, hit into a double play, started by Danny Cox, shattered his bat, and singled a right in the seventh. He's hitting 375 in the series. The fella, I guess, who suffers the heartbreak of the series, Dave Dravecki. Strike. And the Cardinals now getting closer and closer to Minnesota. In there. 55,331 delirious Cardinal fans and in direct contrast a small island of giant fans sitting downcast by the dugout. Harry Spillman. Minnesota. Chili Davis 0 for 3 and they are going to blow this place apart any minute. strike. 
Patterson of the San Francisco Giants. A price had to be paid tonight in the seventh game. Somebody had to pay it. And it's the black and orange of San Francisco. Full price. possibly throw up there because he's showing him the curveball to change up the fastball. He wants to end it right here and he's not going to give in by just throwing straight fastballs. Three and one to Chili Davis. Two out in the ninth. Six nothing St. Louis. High fly ball to shallow left. Vince Coleman. Minnesota for this man and his Cardinals. The miracle, work, miracle worker, my goodness, it was special. Yeah, Jay, I can't say enough about this ball club. I mean, I don't know why we're here. I mean, we just had uh, a lot of things go wrong all year. We've had trouble keeping our lineup on the field. And to do this without Jack Cox by the feet for the guys. And we got two super pitch games from Tudor and Cox. And uh, they had only pitched uh, one game against the Giants all year. And I think that's a turning point that they were able to play a pitch in this series. Why did the comeback in game three? How important was that? We, we wanted to win a ball game in San Francisco. We knew we had to do that, Jay. And uh, like I said, I would like to uh, win another one there, and we didn't. But uh, the Giants are a good ball club. They're a well-managed ball club. And I want to congratulate their organization, Al Rosen and Bob Laurie. And, of course, Roger Craig did a super job with the club. You stopped them in these final two games. You stopped them cold. Well, it was about time we did something right. We weren't playing very well, and I was real worried about the ball club coming home to San Francisco. Now you have to go to Minnesota. You're still banged up. A lot of people will say you can't make it, but you've made it every time they've said it. Well, we're just going to have to go out and play. I don't know who my lineup's going to be, how Terry is, and Jack said a question mark, and I don't even know who I'm going to pitch the first ball game. Well, it's a great tribute to this bunch, a banged-up bunch. And, uh, you know, somebody said the other day, Herzog can take just about anybody and Jose Akendo and win. And how about Akendo tonight? Well, actually, if you talk about most valuable players, you know, he'd have to be up there on our ball club. He's filled in all over for me. He's done a super job. He hit real well. He's got a lot of big hits. But the big thing, every place I put him, he did a super job defensively. He's really been an important part of this ball club. Congratulations, Whitey. Well, thank you, Jay. Whitey Herzog, who's done it. And, Vinny, let's go back to you. And amidst the bubbly inside the dressing room, the man who did it all, who pulled the cork that let the champagne flow, Danny Cox, for the third time this year, pitching on three days rest. He pinched the clincher in the division against Montreal and the clincher against San Francisco. The crowd here at Bush.
Stadium in St. Louis chanting one last time, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, as if maybe he could hear it in the clubhouse. I doubt that very much. I think they've adopted him. Uh, he put a lot of extra pressure on himself, but he came through. And I'll tell you, he was the one giant that was pretty consistent through the whole series. He really was. He could have come back with three more hits tonight. As it was, he had two, and a leaping catch by Ozzie Smith took another one away from him. So the left fielder did the best he could, but he was sure outnumbered. Uh, the Giants ran into that cold streak. They have not scored a run for all those innings, and Danny Cox was just a bit too tough for him. Well, right now, never mind the charts, let's go to the two small men who are the biggest in town. Ozzie Smith, Jose Akendo, and let's go to Jay Randolph. All right, and they are little big men indeed. Here is Ozzie. Ozzie, this has got to be very, very nice for you, considering the tremendous pressure down the stretch with all the injuries on this club. Well, you know, I, our club, I, I think the, the way we had to finish the season, going down the stretch as we did, it really prepared us for anything that we have to take on beyond this point, Jay. Uh, you know, we just can't say enough about our pitching down the stretch. Our pitching really uh, held us together. Uh, the first part of the season was offense, but the second half, our pitching put us, put us where we are right here today. All right. What about the I'll pay you back with Leonard here tonight? Well, you know, let me let me say that, you know, I, I, coming into this, this series here, I felt that that ball club over there had no respect for us as a club at all. That's right, you did. I, they had no respect at all. And what we try and do here, Jay, is we always try and respect everybody that we play. And I hope that those guys learn that you try to respect everybody that you play because you can be beaten on any, any given day. How about the play tonight? It was beautiful. I mean, you know, we did what we had to do. And we proved that, hey, we have some of the greatest fans in the world, too. And it's just great. And, and you know, having Yeah, bring him in. Now, here's a fella that is, you're here early, but he is here before anybody else. That's right. uh, he was here hitting balls this afternoon at 2, and then he hit one out at 6 tonight. He worked. Or uh, six hours later, I guess it was, around 8. Jose Akendo. Well, I feel great. That, that home run, I dedicate to my daughters because there's a birthday today, so I dedicate that home run for her. I know that you've hit a lot of balls and you've played every position but catch this year. And right now you're getting doused. This has to be something for you. All three of your home runs against San Francisco and this big bomb. Yeah, it's something for me. It's exciting for me. I feel great. Uh, I'll see right here. Give us a meeting yesterday. It was motivated for us and make make everybody going and make that we can come back and get this guy because uh, before before the series, before the, everything was over, they was talking uh, a little too much. I think and, and we we got to let him know that we're for real and we want to win the game. We want to win they everything. Came, they came to talk and we came to play. All right. Apparently your talk did some good. Let's go now to Marv Albert. All right, Jay, and this is Jeffrey Leonard, who has been voted the most valuable player of the league championship series with 10 hits to tie a league championship series uh, record, also the four home runs, but I think uh, you would rather be celebrating in a victorious locker room. Yeah, right now the award means nothing to me. Um, along with my teammates, you know, we're saddened by the loss. And obviously not going to the World Series, so you know, right now the award doesn't mean nothing. You have that uh, $50,000 incentive bonus in your contract for winning MVP honors. Would you trade the uh, 50000 for a trip to the World Series? Anything for it. 50000 the award, everything. If we could win. Right, they are still uh, taunting you outside with chants of <clears throat> Jeffrey. Jeffrey, how difficult was it for you in left field tonight following what took place last night? Um, obviously, I think my performance dictated how difficult it was. It wasn't difficult at all. I played my game. Um, you know, like, un unfortunately, you know, the, uh, the Cardinals played a better game. Oquendo had a big hit, um, <clears throat> but as far as disrupting me or uh, getting me up on game, no. Ozzie Smith said a moment ago that uh, the Giants had no respect at all for the Cardinals. Is that accurate? No, we have respect for them, you know, but uh, even as I stand here now, I still feel that, uh, and everybody in this clubhouse feel that we are the better team. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't, it doesn't always work like that. Seeing that, you know, uh, the Cardinals won. Uh, any team can be beaten at any given day. But we did have respect for him. Were you trying to get Ozzy in that play at second base with the slide? I tried to get Ozzy. I mean, I, I've been playing nine years now, and, that, and that's probably only the third time I, I've ever touched him. So, you know, I don't know why he, he got all, all upset. But I'll tell you this, if I ever get him, I'm going to get him. 
I think uh, Ozzie Smith is listening very carefully uh, to that. How disappointing, though, is this uh, for you in that you come in leading the uh, Cardinals three games to two, and the club just stops executing, no hitting at all? Very disappointing. I don't think that there's a, a giant in this clubhouse that, that won't have a long, long winner. Uh, like I said, you know, unfortunately, these things happen. Uh, the timing was bad, but um, we have to rebound and, and rebuild over winning time. You know, it's, it's going to be uh, painful, but we'll get over it. All right, the series MVP, Jeffrey Leonard of the Giants in a very quiet giant clubhouse, as you'd expect. Let's get back to Vin and Joe. Well, in direct contrast to the quiet losing clubhouse, as you can well imagine, this crowd of 55,331 absolutely beside itself with joy and understandably. Understandably, because they had a ball club that really did have to battle. Uh, I was quite surprised, though, with the uh, statements made in the clubhouse, Ben. Yeah. Uh, I thought Ozzy Smith pretty tough. They came to talk. We came to play. Maybe one of those things will carry into next year, I'm sure. Sounded like the baseball equivalent of Rodney Dangerfield when he said... We didn't get any respect. Well, they certainly have the respect and admiration of the baseball world tonight because down three games to two, this rather miraculous St. Louis Cardinal ball club pulled off back-to-back -back miracles. That they did because game three was a game when he played. We talked about it with almost a B-squad lineup, and they won it. And uh, you have to give a lot of credit to the Giants, too. Nobody picked them to really win their thing the way they went. They, they, they had a respectable season. They, they ran into a, a streak at the end here that really hurt them. But the, the Cardinals, it's their story. Well, as you probably know, if you were listening and watching, why Jeffrey Leonard has been the most valuable player of the LCS. Meanwhile, we have our own MVP, the NBC Miller Lite player of the game. And that would have to be Danny Cox and a $1,000 challenge in the name of Danny Cox will go to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Game 7 of the National League Championship Series has been brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered draft beer. It's as real as it gets. By the Prudential. Going above and beyond to meet your needs in insurance and other financial services. By the heartbeat of America. Today's Chevy truck by the Industrial Tool Division of Black & Decker. We'd like to thank the executive producer of NBC Sports, Michael Weissman, the coordinating producer of NBC's baseball and director of tonight's game, Harry Coyle, the producer of tonight's game, John J. Filippelli, pregame producer, Steve Dans, and the pregame director, Richard Klein. Here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, as the joy not only has reached its zenith, it will stay here for quite a while. Let's take a moment now in the aftermath, in the calm, to reflect and look back over the 87 National League Championship Series. First, it began with the crowds, as it usually does. Flaming red in St. Louis, black and orange in San Francisco. Two very different cities sharing the common bond of enthusiasm and a fervent prayer for victory. And then it was the time of the managers, and they were different too. The hard-pressed Whitey Herzog, so very short of healthy players, making do as best he could. And Roger Craig, who held most of the aces and shuffled them on every deal. And then there were the players. The last-minute substitute, Greg Matthews, winning the first game for St. Louis. Dave Dravecki's brilliant two-hitter to get San Francisco even. The understudy hero, Jim Lindemann, playing the role of Jack Clark, driving in three and giving St. Louis the edge. The double-zero Jeffrey Leonard, hitting his fourth home run in as many games to even the series, while taunting the Cardinals with his one flap down home run trot. Amidst the bedlam of candlestick, the emergence of a character actor to the role of star, Joe Price. Game six took all the wizardry the Cardinals could muster. The judgment of Terry Pendleton. The bad fortune of Candy Maldonado. And the guile of Tony Pena. And with it all, the Cardinals were still alive. There would be a game seven. And an unlikely hero. But again, it's the oldest story in the world as David slays Goliath. A 
three-run home run by Jose Aquindo celebrating his child's birthday. And another magnificent clutch performance by Danny Cox. And the St. Louis Cardinals are off the ground and flying high, out of sight, on their way to Minnesota.